let me guys go over um chapter five work here chapter nine i mean and then uh, i'm going to say a few things about the layout of the low voltage when we go there okay chapter nine guys lithonia the software that you have uh derek will give you a road uh lighting calculation component so you there is a software guys that comes from Lithonia and many manufacturers that allow you to high to design lighting uh, system for streets and interstates and highways and alleys and what's not. Did you guys hear me? So there is a component. Okay, so I'm just going to focus quickly over it. It's called road lighting. The most important thing, guys, when you deal with, with roads, Karen, is is it residential, commercial, or highways? That's a major part. Are you doing these... Um, poles and lights are you putting it in a residential um, neighborhood or commercial neighborhood or or highways the most important because of because of this uh, brian and um, if it's in a commercial area we don't care about as much about spill light spill right if it's a residential area people will be complaining all the time because the light is shining right into their bedroom right from the street so that's a major part when you do streets and alleys so is it residential commercial or highways did you guys hear me? That's a ma major decision. Then there's something called glare. Glare, glare. I don't know, um, uh, Derek. When you're driving down Highway 494 and somebody puts their high beams on, well, how do you feel when you're driving right in front of them? Or maybe in a in a in a county county road, right? Have you anybody you guys have been driving? I'm sure in a county road and somebody left their uh, high beam on, right? You see, it's unreal. You can't see anything. So glare, so when you put your lights, guys, street lights, you have to keep into consideration that you want to minimize the glare that's going to be coming out of these fixtures. So the glare comes into two types. So a glare becomes a big deal in highways, guys, because if you just get distracted, you can't see, well, guess what? And you're running at uh, 55 miles an hour, you're going to hit somebody um, or you're going to cause an accident. So glare is a major part. So when, you, when they design... The software that they have, uh, Derek, they tell you what's the glare percentage of glare. If you put it, if you orient this picture this way or that way, it will get you how much glare this picture is. It going to shine right into the driver's eyes or not? Okay, so glare comes into two parts, Adam. One is called discomfort; it doesn't make you feel good. The other one is disability. Disability, Karen, means you cannot see. That's exactly when the headlights go on high beam. Somebody puts headlights high beam right in the front of you while driving on the counter road to two lane highway okay any comments guys about the the glare is a major component when it comes to the highways major component two parts discomfort it makes you feel uncomfortable but it's not that dangerous disability so when you design a brian aligning system for a highway you have to take these two into consideration minimize the glare minimize the glare by or by how do you minimize it by the orientation and the location of your lighting fixture and the way you orient them and and uh, and tip them okay if we have so when you put your street lights guys they typically put them in poles um you can go from 10 foot all the way to boy uh, all the way to 175 feet on major intersection so um what they do so that's the height of the fixture guys they also sit them back they sit when they put the fixture in residential they sit them back a foot to three feet when you when you put your fixture you sit them back three to two feet um in residential guys typically 30 to 75 um um what and a 10 foot high in residential um so and, and so these are the height of the fixtures either you can put from 10 typically residential into 30 in a commercial industrial 30 foot like parking lots into it can go as high as 75 foot in highways you've probably seen them so high 75 foot or even higher um any comments guys about the height probably 10 in streets and alleys residential streets and alleys to 30 foot in commercial uh, industrial areas into 75 feet in, in highways and streets and what's not. Any comments, guys, about the highs and the poles? Location, they sit them, they typically sit back. Here's the highway. They sit the, the, the fixture back, the pole, when they mount them one to three feet. When it comes to street lights, Karen, there's something called spillover light. That spillover light is a major part. You do not want the light that's that you're shining at the highway or the street to go where it's not supposed to go in people's windows right 
they get very upset or in businesses. So spillover is a major part. Because of this gentlemen and ladies, we have um, something called type one, type two, and type three fixtures, guys. And these has to do with how do they distribute the lights. Any comments, guys, about when you are doing highways, pay attention to the glare, pay attention to residential, commercial, or highways, glare, disability, discomfort, location, sit back one to three feet, high 10 to 30 feet, or, or as high as 75 foot. Watts, you can go from 75 watt all the way to 1,000 watt on the highways, guys, they, they use. Um, uh, voltages, they burn them from 120 all the way to 600 volt in the highways. They burn these lights. Okay, so the fixture type, I'm going to focus a little bit about the fixture type. Uh, Karen, when you guys were doing the parking lot, do you, do you remember the iso, isometric curve that you that comes with the lighting fixture? Do you guys remember that? When you put your lighting fixture, it comes with that little curve around it, and you over override them. That's, a, that's what you're looking at here. In residential, we typically use type one. Type one guys looks like this. So if I am the fixture, Karen, I can either I can spill the the light this way, or I can spill it more forward, or to the sides, or more backward. So that's the way that the fixture is designed. It can throw more light forward, or to the sides, or forward and to the back. So if you're doing residential, Brian. Typically, what you need to do is have type one. Type one, you set your fixture three feet, you put a 10 foot, and you have an arm, a 10 or eight foot arm that shine that fixture right in the middle of the street, right, residential street, and all the light go from curb to curb into this residential street, no more. 99% or 95% of the light is going to stay in the highway. Why? Because the neighbors get very upset if the light is shining into their bedrooms, right? Would you? Wouldn't you, Derek, get upset if the, the street lights are shining right into your bedroom? So that's what they do. They put an arm on them. You've seen them all the time. And it shines right into the middle of the street and, and spreads the light just on the street. Any comments, guys, about Type 1? See how Type 1, you mount it right in the middle of the street? Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a major, a major concern. Right into people's yards, and and yeah, it's a bit. When you do residential lighting, guys, in Bloomington, there are a lot of restrictions, a lot of restrictions. Every every city, almost a lot of restrictions. Because people do do a lot of actually neighborhoods who have control over their neighbor neighborhood, they refuse to put street lights all together. They just put them in the intersection, like where I live. They don't put they don't have street lights. They just put them wherever a two wherever two uh, streets intersect. They just put one light there because you know the intersections become dangerous. Very very limited amount of lights because lighting people don't they don't like lights. Street lights. I mean I don't like street lights right next to my house. Um, so the Limitations, especially in residential areas. People want to sleep. They don't want a, too much light coming from outside. Okay, now if you're in a commercial area, commercial area, not a whole lot of people sleeping at night, right? Most of the people go home. So they use type two, guys. Type two, they put them right in the side, and it shines all the way at the highway and spills a little bit over. If you have sidewalks, it spills even to the sidewalks. Um, if it's two-lane, they use them typically in two-lane uh, commercial. In a comer Also in a commercial, if you have sidewalk, if you have sidewalk you that you would net, right? In the commercial area, typically you have sidewalk so people can walk. Um, they use type three. What type three does, guys, if I'm the fixture, look what it does. It throws the light to the streets into the opposite sidewalk and throw a little bit back into the, the, the both sidewalks on, bo on both um in, in both areas or, or on both uh, locations. So you can see how the light curve is, is actually having light on the sidewalk as, it, as well as the street. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? 
So that's what I wanted to um, <clears throat> to mention about these, um, the most important things. Any comments, guys, about the types? Type one, residential. Type two, uh, commercial. Two lane, no sidewalk. Type three, typically you use it for commercial with um, sidewalks, so it can spill over. There's um, a cutoff, guys. Fixtures with cutoff, ninety percent cutoff or what's not so it doesn't spill at all it just shoots the lights right in the middle of the street so there's a, a lot of um a lot of solution that you can have so the light does not <clears throat> spill over to the neighbors especially if you're doing residential neighborhoods especially if you're doing residential neighborhood um so one more time when you're doing street lights pay attention to the spillover light the type of the fixture will decide the distribution um, so you can get away with certain types if you're doing streets, but you can't get away with them if you're doing highways and what's not. So there's different um, different types will apply to different applications. Any comments, guys, about the types? Any comments, any questions about the types? Comments, questions about the types? In terms of watts, you can go from, like I said, 175 watt, 400 watt, up to 1,000 watt, guys. Um, there's um there's a lot of like street highways and and interstates and what's not the intersection you see them these big floodlight way at the top sitting 75 foot up in the air on 100 feet up in the, 75 typically throwing the light all over into these intersections don't you guys see them when you're driving around so these are they have multiple heads on them and shining all over um Okay, so watts, you can go, as I said, from 175 all the way to 1,000 watt voltages. You can burn them from 600 volt into a 120 volt. Um, typically, you know, different different voltages you can use with them. Um, when you do streets, guys, the foot candle minimum that you want to maintain, so for safety reasons and driving properly, is 0.5. You want to maintain a 0.5 minimum. Did you guys hear me? So that's what you worry about, 0.5 minimum. Um, in terms of ratio for highways, for highways, the ratio, guys, which is the average to minimum, they try to shoot for 3 to 1, meaning average is 3 times more than minimum. For streets, 6 to 1 is okay. Um, you can see different ratios uh, for different uh, streets. So here's the isometric curve. Here's my picture. You can see the cutoff right here is 0.5, right at the edges here, 0.5. I don't want it to be less than 0.5. In this area where Chad's uh, front yard is, you know, you want it to be zero. You want it to be zero. Any comments, guys? Any questions about street um, lighting? I can't emphasize, Karen. We don't have the software the, because we're not doing street lights. But if you are to do, you work at a company. MinDot and what's not, um, or other companies that do street lighting. There's a software, really nice software, that tell you what the glare. You know what they do, Derek? Even it gives you 3D view and it it dims and it shows you how the light is gonna look like if you're driving. It's really cool. I used it years ago. Um, it gives you a view how it's gonna look like from an uh, at night from the eyes of the driver. So it's. Um, and so there are a lot of concerns, guys, especially in the highways. In the highways, the main concern is the glare, the ability to see without being disturbed by too much light into your eyes. Too much light into your eyes. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments about this little chapter? Any questions? Comments, questions? So that's basically what I wanted to show, Karen. Comments, my friends, questions. So please go ahead and do the homework for that one. Again, it's um, the street lighting is FYI only, just so you know that it exists and there's component that you do. So if you end up working for a company that does street lights, I don't think Michelle only really does street lights. Um, you know, there's certain companies, SCH used to, used to work for them. They do street lights and what's not. Comments, questions, gentlemen? So that give you kind of a flavor what street lights and slide is. Really, the most important thing thing is a spillover um, to people's homes in residential and the glare in the highways. Okay, that's all I have for you. <clears throat>